All right, here goes, guys. It's going to be loud. Go ahead and clear out, clear out. All right, hey, this is Joel Walsman. I'm CEO and Master Electrician at Jefferson Electric. And today I've brought you into my house. I've got to perform some repairs and fixes. I bought the house over a year ago and I've been delinquent in correcting code violations. So today you're going to walk through replacing a floor receptacle with me. What's the issue with this receptacle might be your question. It looks fairly good. It's actually a relatively new receptacle. But here's the deal. That receptacle puts everybody at risk for shock hazard. Just picture this, you're, you're walking through the dining room or you're locating a piece of furniture and you step right on that receptacle. This is lightweight plastic. The risk that it could break and cause an arc or a shock to somebody or through a piece of furniture to somebody is, um, is actually, it's actually pretty real. So today I've got a listed floor assembly kit, floor box kit, and I'm gonna show you how to install it and um, clean this all up. The tools I'm using today are an oscillator, cut through my wood flooring so I can take the shape of the new box. I've got a couple screwdrivers and my tools here. Um, we're uh, ready at this point to turn off power and get started. All right, buddy, shut it off. Oh, he's working on it. There it is, it's off. So. Um, I've got my tester in here, and on my tester there's a readout of 123 volts. See, I want to make sure before I get started on a project that I'm taking some tests and measurements of what's existing. So at the end of the project, if I'm testing and I'm running into issues, I know whether it's an existing issue or whether it's a new issue, and that's going to give me a lot of insight into diagnostics and troubleshooting. So at this point, my power's shut off, and we're rocking and rolling. All right, I'm gonna rip, rip up my hands. Um, so, hey, you got it, good job. Appreciate it. <laughs> Head on out there, buddy. Um, by the time we get through these projects, I'm gonna be cut and bleeding. And uh, because I'm using, you see, I don't wear safety glasses all the time when I'm working, but whenever I'm at risk of flyings, just flying particles, uh, then I'm definitely gonna do that. I love to double check things just in case. We're electricians, what we do is important, so we double and triple check everything. Two separate test pieces of equipment. Grab the appropriate screwdriver and we're off and running. Some guys power tool everything just as much as they can. I hand tool as much as I can. Like I would have saved like four seconds by using a driver to zip that thing out, but I would have spent like two minutes getting my driver and swapping out the bit to the right. All right. Oh, buddy, it's going to be a good one. I can already tell. Here we go. All right, so I'm watching things as I take them apart, and uh, I want to make sure if, if I've got any kind of interesting situation, off the beaten track, um, oddity going on, then I, I want to be taking pictures and making notes as I'm taking things apart, even labeling what's going on. And one of the things you see that's taking place here is I've got a bunch of household dust, dirt, dog fur that's in here. Um, I've got wood chips, popsicle sticks. Uh, look at that, popsicle sticks. These are combustible materials. Um, part of the reason a floor assembly is required is because this is a gasketed sealed assembly with a good tight fit. And <clears throat> what's going on here, existing, is, is not that. And so I have created, or the, the box has become a flammable environment with kindling for the fire if anything goes wrong. Really not a good situation. I'm really not concerned about the state of the box. If it comes apart on its way out, that's completely fine. I just want to preserve the floor, which is why I've got this drop cloth out here. Put my power tools on it. Uh, whew, I wonder if they pounded it in. I don't see anything securing it, but it is a tight, tight fit. This little piece of wood right here is not continuous with anything else. 
and you can see movement on that piece of wood. So I want to take it easy there. And then this one's been notched so deeply that if I'm really prying on something, it's a potential I could get a stress crack right, right across there. So I'm trying to preserve the flooring, not the box. Little at a time. There it is, coming all apart. Oh, I've got a lot of wood going on here. I've got three inches of solid wood. Use my flashlight. Thankfully, they did not damage any structural members in order to fit this box in. How many times have you seen HVAC guys, plumbers, electricians, just cut the heck out of structural members and leave things wanting? The house is built in 1938, so what I'm seeing is a little bit unconventional, but uh, it's not concerning. That's a big plus. There's a lot of material to cut through here. What I'm probably going to end up doing is I'm going to use my oscillator to cut through a real nice fine cut through my surface layer, but then I'm going to get the saws all out. And that's what's going to do the rest of that cutting for me because it's going to cut at a much faster rate. The oscillator can be a little bit slow, although very controlled. My wiring is down out of the way. It's fallen to the bottom of the floor cavity. So I'm not worried about cutting into it. It's definitely something to watch out for. I don't have anything else around the perimeter of the hole. Um, duct work, plumbing, piping that I'm worried about. I do have some nails I'm going to have to cut through. Slow things down a bit. All right, now here's my floor box. And what I have is a much overall different shape. And this is like my one complaint right here. To cut this into the floor is such an odd and irregular shape. It's a little bit time consuming. Um, but otherwise, overall, the product is real quality. And when I'm laying out my cut, my ring, uh, there's that gasket I was telling you about. See that? And a protective finish on the cover. When I'm laying out my, my cut here, I've got to be mindful that I, I can't put it back in the exact same location because the uh, diameter of the, the cover plate is going to be literally into my trim there. So I'm going to have to bring it out a little bit and make sure I clear. The finished product is a good, good flush fit. I'd even like there to be just an eighth of an inch gap if possible. If I can get coverage of the existing cut and have an eighth of an inch gap, to me that looks just a little bit more intentional than having the cover smashed up against the trim and a little bit more serviceable too, other than like a tight wedged fit. Guys, you've seen it before. I love my folding rule. All right, so now I've got a position for the rim, the, the cover that's going to fit. I'm going to get coverage of the existing marks on the floor. I've got a little service gap there, looks good. I've got the box lined up with the cover and I'm measuring off trim to each side of the box. The, the cover is so generous in its coverage of the box that I'm not gonna cut this to the near 16th. I'm gonna give myself a very intentional about a quarter of an inch, almost a quarter of an inch play on either side. So I'm gonna cut this to two and four and seven eighths. Those are my cut marks, two and four and seven eighths. All right, now I've got a pretty generous cut and <clears throat> I've got no obstructions to be concerned about underneath the floor. So I am gonna put the box where it's gonna look good Again, I'm going to give myself some intentional play because if you look at this box, the mounting mechanism is here and here. That's what's going to screw into the floor. It, none of the rest of the box has to be in contact with the wood in order to be tight and right. Hi, Jubilee. I just want to make sure everything's going to cover. Woo. 
Getting pretty close there. I'm gonna snug it up a little bit on the actual cut itself. Now here's a, here's a pro tip. I'm gonna use electrical tape to outline my cut for two reasons. First reason is, um, by the time I start cutting, I'm gonna lose my marks in the sawdust. I'm gonna have to keep blowing it off. And uh, secondly, the tape actually has just a little bit of holding power to prevent tear out just a little bit. You, I still recommend using something like an oscillator to make that at least surface level cut through your wood so you don't get crazy tear out. If you're using a sawzall or a keyhole saw, and you could, um, I've got one here. Mine is old and dull. I've used it on drywall plaster, but if you had a new keyhole saw that was intended for wood, you could make this cut with that. In my case, it'd be extremely strenuous to cut all three inches with a, to, uh, a non-powered tool. Um, so I'm, I'm marking my cut. I'm providing a little staying power to the finish on the floor uh, and the top fibers of the wood. And then I'm also gonna be real careful when I pull this up. I was working with the contractor and he said, end of, at the end of the only flawless job he ever did, absolutely smooth as butter, he is, uh, <laughs> He's collecting the check from the customer. He's pulling up the flooring protection and it's an adhesive type. It's laying on a hardwood floor and he's just like full of gusto. He's so proud of what they've done. He grabs the flooring protection and he just rips it up and it takes the finish right off the floor in front of the customer. So anytime you're removing an adhesive, a tape from any kind of finished surface, take it easy, go slow. All right, here goes, guys. It's going to be loud. Go ahead and clear out, clear out. Again, I don't want to go too, too far into the corners, or I could get into an area where I'm not going to have coverage on that plate, but I think at this point, I'm ready to go. Man, that's a brand new blade. This maple floor is hard. Now I'm going to take a, a brand new uh, self-feeding bit. This is a little bit aggressive, but I'm going to go real slow and easy on a low torque setting. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to plunge these two corners where I've got an inside cut to make. And then I'm going to finish off with a Sawzall with a fine tooth blade. That's about a 32 TPI. Oh, and about the smoke, right? That can cause people to be a little bit nervous. Um, it's very superficial. It's probably... Um, mostly either the finish on the blade or the finish on the floor that's causing that smoke. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. It's if you've got some billowing going on out of the hole, uh, uh, you could have accidentally ignited something. Uh, so superficial smoke, not too, not too concerning. All right, where I would not um, use a bit like this to cut into the corner is if I hadn't already cut through the surface, I could get some real nasty tear out in that hardwood floor. So um, being incredibly mindful of that. You know, I'm gonna do this too. I'll take it into that. No, I don't think I can. Never mind.
Ease it in, ease it out. Here we go. Couple things to watch out for when you're using the sawzall. One, if the blade is excessively long, you could accidentally get into your wiring and cut it. Um, two, if your blade's too short, which mine almost is, you're not going to get all the way through the work. Three, um, there can be a lot of shake in a sawzall because it's such an aggressive tool, and you can actually end up beating up your work surface with the uh, guard on the tool itself. That's another good reason for tape there is to preserve from just a little bit of hammer and uh, and shake. I'll reverse my blade. So that one piece I was worried about, it just pulled out like a little puzzle piece. That's okay. The box will hold it in once it's placed. Let's try it again. Oh, over here. Closing in. Hammer of choice. So close. We're gonna do what the last guy did. We're gonna wedge it in there. <laughs> so close. All right, you guys. You get a real hammer, but only because you're watching. There it is. We're there. We're there. So I'm going to use a plastic popping connector. I'm going to put it right in the back of my box. I've got a lot of options as far as where to bring the wiring in. Um, but the reason is I don't have a lot of slack on my wire. So I want to come in as true as possible so I've got as much to work with inside the box. There it is. Orient your pop-in connector so it's easy for the wire to come in and hard for it to pull back out. It is directional. All right, <clears throat> ready to pull this off. Nice and easy. Get this out of here.
There it is, good flush fit. All the wiring I could, I could ever need, just barely. And now I'm gonna secure the box. Uh, I'm gonna choose to put my fasteners, because I've got so much meat, I don't wanna risk splitting the floor. I'm gonna choose to put my fasteners at an angle down into this meat underneath the flooring, but you've got a lot of options. A series of four holes down the sides, two holes on the top. I would say two solid wood screws is gonna finish the job off. I'm so tight to the wall, I'm gonna use my right angle here. Hopefully screws are provided. Great. Everything I could ever need, right there. It appears to be pine below the floor, so I'm not worried about pre-drilling. But if I was mounting through the floor, I'd definitely pre-drill that hole with a bit that's about 50 to 80% the size of the diameter of the screw. Super solid. All right, one of the adjustment factors on this box is there is a Phillips screw on either side that can be adjusted to help raise and lower the box. So we'll see what the final fit is all in. <clears throat> I'm gonna utilize and prep this green um, grounding jumper and I'm gonna secure it to the hole in the box, you'll see a ground symbol. Looks like a little Christmas tree. And we're gonna be sure to have a really good grounding connection between the box, the wiring, and the receptacle. So we're gonna set the screw in the jumper using the round end, not the forked end. Um, and dial it into the hole. You're gonna get that snug but not death grip. Whenever you're making electrical connections, really death grip is not your friend. You risk stripping things out, smashing things that aren't meant to be smashed. So just snug. Got a nice little cover on it. Here we go. We noticed when we took it apart, it's real important, we took it apart and the white was our neutral. It goes to the silver screw terminal I am gonna go ahead and wrap the conductor clockwise around the screw. So when I tighten it up righty tighty, it pulls it into the work. I'm setting, because this is a metallic box, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down my unused screw terminal. I'm securing my ground to the green screw. Again, nice and snug with a well-fitting tool, but not death grip. If you find yourself slipping off the screw head, then you probably don't have the right tool. There it is. Now, see I'm in a dusty environment here with all this sawdust. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the job, I don't want that in my box because it's flammable. And I want this box to be clean and free of debris, especially flammable, combustible debris. So I, I'm working with a metal box. There are some mildly sharp edges. I'm gonna just tuck and fold my wiring down into the box so that it's not forced or jammed into anything that's gonna cause abrasion. Using the provided 632 screws, we're gonna secure the receptacle yoke to the box. 
our grounding connections are made, our neutral and hot connections are made. If the cut is too tight, what I'm seeing here is your receptacle is every bit as big, if not a little bigger than the box itself. And if that cut pattern is too tight around the box, you won't get your receptacle in. I'm using a number two Phillips to snug it down. Peel that off. Despite the dust, <laughs> protective dust cover, my receptacle is pretty dusty. So here's a trial fit. I don't expect it to fit just right just yet. Might have to do a little bit more sweet talking. there. All right, Lefty Lucy is what drops the box, and it's getting hung up just a little bit, so I'm having to push on it as I lower the box with the end goal of having a nice, flush, well-seated cover to the box and the floor. Test as we go. Another eighth of an inch. there. All right, this end is riding a little high. Hmm, could actually be this. All right, it's actually not the box, it's far enough down. It's just a regular pattern on the back of the cover that's hanging up on the edge of my flooring. And so I need to figure out exactly where. Feels like it's this corner. And then bring my receptacle back up to meet. I really do want a, a closed sealed fit between the cover and the surface of my receptacle and my box. Keep things out of the box. Mice, dust, lint, dog hair. A little more cutting, folks. All right, we're going to pile it through the hole now for the mounting screws. We've got a total of four screws with colored heads. 
I like the orientation. I've got it uh, flipping up like that with the flap towards the wall. It looks square. Careful not to plunge too far and scar the face of my plates, my cover with my drill. Interpose my finger between. <clears throat> so I am concerned about that one. I'm hearing some creaking and popping. So I'm gonna use a slightly larger drill bit to pilot that hole because I don't want a split coming right out of the side of that. Oh, you're kidding me. Look at that. Such a cheap screw. I was barely moving it and I snapped the head right off. All right. So I've got construction adhesive. What I'm gonna do is, I've got three screws holding that thing in there really good. And I'm gonna use, for decorative purposes only, you're gonna use a little bit of this construction adhesive which is rated for metal. Dab that in there as clean as I can. Right there. Don't overwork it. Walk away from it. Let it be. Okay. Time to turn the power on and test it. All right, buddy, turn it on. Oh. My tester turned off. There it is, 124 volts AC. All right, we nailed it. <laughs> it was a little sloppy on the cuts, and that's the part I always hate. There's got to be a better way. Check the description below. Engage with us. I'm learning every day. Maybe you can teach me something. NEC article 406. Um, the references are listed below. This is a tamper resistant receptacle. So even if something does get past the cover, there's not much of a chance that it's gonna get into the electrical wiring. We've got a pretty good tight fit. And join us for the next video on installing a receptacle for your water softener. I've got an extension cord that's been living down there for quite some time. I've gotta get rid of.